Hello, welcome back to class. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the basics of bearings. So we're titling it as bearings part one. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at the more advanced questions um, that you have to deal with in bearings that tend to pop up on the, the section two of your CXE paper. For this lesson though, we're going to be revi revising those basic ideas that you need to have done for you to make sense of bearings as a topic. So we are going to review concepts of angles and parallel lines. Then we talk about bearings in general. Then we're gonna talk about some simple diagrams, drawing them to show you how it works, and then to do some simple calculations. Among the very important things that you need to remember and have fresh in your mind when you do bearings are these ideas. One, the idea of angles at a point. Angles at a point measure 360 degrees. That's very, very important to remember. We also need to remember angles on a line. Sometimes we say angles on a straight line. They measure 180 degrees. And of course, we need to remember that angles in a triangle, when we sum them, when we add them, we end up with 180 degrees. Also very important are these two ideas of opposite angles. So these two angles are opposite to each other. And these these are opposite to each other. Sometimes we say vertically opposite or just opposite. Corresponding angles is a very important one that comes up. And here we can say that this angle A corresponds with this angle B. Notice they're in similar positions. So if you would take this one and slide it down or slide this one up, they would match exactly onto each other. And also we can talk about angles that are alternate to each, alternate to each other. And here we see two angles, C and D, that are alternate to each other. Alternate angles are also important in that sometimes we call them Z angles. So as long as these two lines are parallel, then this angle is alternate to this one and that they will be equal. We can see it from the diagram here. If we should put in that Z, then this angle here would be A and this angle here would be B. So A and B are equal because they are alternate to each other. In the other sense that it's taken from this direction. So there's another Z there drawn in a, in, in a reverse direction. So that angle, this angle are alternate to each other. That's your C and your D. So alternate angles are important to remember. Corresponding angles are important to remember. And opposite angles are also important to remember. Angles at a point measure 360. Straight angles measure 180 and sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Very important ideas to keep fresh in your head as you talk about bearings. Now, what exactly is a bearing? A bearing is a standardized method of writing direction. Simply put, that's what it is. The people who use bearings are persons who normally work in, in navigation, such as persons who work on ships, submarines, aircraft. Of course, nowadays, computers run those things, but the primary training that people do must ensure that they know exactly what they're doing in case of equipment failure. Then they can resort to the, the manual way of doing things. Now, every bearing diagram must start with a north line. And here, we tend to use the up part of our paper as north. So we have our north, we have east, we have south, and we have west. North is ten, ten, to be designated as 000. zero, zero. Um, east is zero nine zero, then one eight zero degrees and two seventy degrees. We get those continuing this way. We get three sixty degrees. We get those by adding ninety. So ninety here, ninety here, then ninety here, then ninety here. As you saw it a while ago, you would have seen that angles are measured in a clockwise direction, and we use north as the reference point. So this is our reference point, much in the same way that older ship pierce persons like Columbus and those other guys who would be traveling with all modern, modern navigation would use the North Star to navigate then um, and their compasses. Much is the same sense with this. The North is our reference point. So every diagram that you draw with bearings must have that North because it is your reference point. All bearings are measured from the north line to somewhere, have to be from the north line. Um, and of course, mathematics uses grid north 
as our north line. So the, you may know that there are different types of north, um, the, the true north and the magnetic north and the grid north. We use the, we use the grid north in math. Um, grid north tends to look like these lines, which are um, longitude lines which lie on your flat map. That is a map that is drawn flat. So each of these would be a uh, longitude. They would have specific degrees. We're not interested in those because it's not important right now. Back in the day when we used to do Earth trigonometry, then it became important. But for this, it's not important. We just need to remember that all north lines are parallel to each other. That's very important to know, which is why we need to keep in mind the idea of angles between parallel lines because all our north lines are parallel to each other. These would be latitudes. Latitudes would be like east and west. Um, and when a north line meets a latitude, they create right angles. So each of these angles would be a right angle. And that's also very important to remember. So every diagram that you draw, every single diagram that you draw must begin with a north line. Have to have a north line as your reference point. And for convention, we use up as our north. All right. Now that we've mentioned all of that, we want to sketch a diagram. Now let's say a ship S is 60 meters away from a lighthouse L on a bearing of 45 degrees. So it's 60 kilometers away on a bearing of 45 degrees. First thing we do is that we are going to draw our north line. Here's our north line. This tells us it's north, north, this direction will be east and south and west. No, the ship is 60 kilometers away on a bearing of 045. Bearings are written with three digits. It's very important to remember. I should have mentioned that earlier. So bearings are written with three digits. So 45 degrees, since this would be zero, that would be 90. This would be 180 and 270. 45 degrees falls exactly between zero and 90. And this distance is 60 kilometers. The ship S would be here, and the lighthouse L is here because it says the ship S is 60 kilometers away from L. So this is S away from L. The 45 degrees goes here. When you're writing it, though, you don't have to put in the zero in the, in the diagram because we understand that we're working with an angle here, so you don't have to write it in bearing form. If a question does ask you to write a bearing, however, you must remember to write it in three digits. All right, so this is our diagram. Let's look at the second one. A man walks 150 meters due west of a point A. So the first thing we need to do is to set up our north line. Here's our north, south, east, and west. And the person is going to walk 150 meters due west. This thing due west is very important. Due means that you must go directly in that direction and do not deviate at all. Straight. So, going 150 meters due west from a point A, so this is going to be our point A, and we go 150 meters due west to a point B. So, this would be the direction that the person walks in, and this would be what our diagram would look like. Now, let's look at another one. This is a question that comes up on a CXC um, multiple choice paper. A ship sailed eight kilometers due east from a point A to a point B, then sailed another six kilometers due, due north to C. So the first thing we do, set up your north line. Here's your north line. This is south, this is west, and this is east. So the question says, it's the ship sailed eight kilometers due east. So we're going to go east. And that's our eight kilometers, and it sailed from A to B. So right here would be our A, and right here is going to be our B. Then it makes another change. So because we're going to draw another line, we need to put in another north line. Here we go. If we continue, we'll be going east. But here now, we're going to continue to north, six kilometers due north. So we're going to go six kilometers in this direction. And it's going to stop at C. So our diagram stops there. And this is pretty, um, pretty much what our diagram would, looks like, would look like. 
um, would go eight kilometers in that direction, going east, and then go six kilometers in that direction, going north. Let's look at another question that we can do some calculations on. A cyclist to ride eight rides eight kilometers due east of a point R to a point S, then rides ten kilometers due south of that point to T. So first we set up our north line. In general, when you're drawing these diagrams, do not draw your north line very close to the top of your paper because sometimes you you will not know exactly where the, the diagram is going to end up. As a, as a matter of practice and, and this case scenario, it's best to draw it somewhere near the middle of your paper so that um, in any case you won't have to draw it over if it ends up too close to the top. So put in your north, put in your south, put in your west, put in your east, and now we need to put this information in. Cyclist rides eight kilometers due east of a point R. So east of R. So this is our R. We're going to go east of R, and that is eight kilometers. Let's go eight kilometers. Here's our eight kilometers. And so the person is now at um, S. And now the person is going to go south, due south. Notice it says due south and due east, which means we go directly. So we go due south. That's our north there. We go due south and we end up at a point T. So this is our diagram. The question now asks us to calculate the distance RT. Let's put that in a different color. RT is here, this distance. Notice again, because we have, we have mentioned before that when a longitude, which is this, the north line meets a latitude, we get a right angle in the corner. So what we have exactly here is a right angle triangle. And because we have a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras to do our calculation because we are trying to find the hypotenuse here. So the, right, the hypotenuse, RT, we can simply say RT square using Pythagoras' theorem. RT square is going to be equal to simply eight square plus six plus um, 10 square. And that gives us that RT square is equal to 164. We can find that without too much fuss um, by finding RT, which would be the square root of 164. And that is simply 12.8. 12 um, 12 when you punch it in your calculator. So this direction here is 12.8 kilometers. All right, this is part one. Now for part two, we are talking about the bearing of T measured from R. So the bearing of T measured from R, remember we said all bearings are measured from the north line. So this is our north line, so we'd measure it in this direction. So this is our bearing. Remember the ship had gone east and then it went south. So this is the, the bearing that it ended up on. We can find this angle. And when we find this angle, it will give us the answer we need for the bearing of T measured from of um, T measured from R. Fortunately, we know what this part is. Right here is 90 degrees. So we have a right angle here, but we do not know what this part is yet. So we need to calculate the size of this part of the angle here. Fortunately, again, because it's a right angle triangle and we have two sides, we can calculate this angle using the Tangent ratio, since we have opposite, this side is opposite, this one is adjacent. And doing that, we can simply say that um, part two, the tangent of the angle, the angle would be SRT, the tangent of SRT would be equal to 10 over 8, that's the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, and therefore, SRT is going to be equal to the tan inverse of 10 over 8. Um, punching that in your calculator should give you 51.3 degrees. Always remember to put your calculator in degree mode when you're working with angles. All right. So here is our, um, our, 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 SR, our SRT. So we can find our answer now by adding that to 90. 
So the bearing of T measured from R would be equal to 90 plus 51.3, which gives us 141.3 degrees. That is our bearing of T measured from R. And now we have to find the other one, which is to say the bearing of R, that is this point, measured from T. So having gone this direction and ended up at T, what is the angle, the bearing that this boat should travel, the cyclist rather, should travel to end up back at R? So what we're going to do is to measure this angle from the north line. And if the cyclist would turn in this direction then and travel along that line, then they would end, back, end up back at R. To do that, here we have a point. Notice that the this is a point um, point angle, and the point angle measures three hundred and sixty degrees. We do not know this part. We do not know this part, so we need to find out what this angle is. And once we find what this angle is, then we can subtract it from three hundred and sixty, and we can get our answer. Um, good thing for us now is that we, we know what this angle is. This angle is 51.3 and this is 90. We also know that angle is in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So we can add 90, we're working with part 3. 90 plus 51.3 would give us 141.3. We just did that. And since angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, then 180 minus 141.3 would leave us with um, 38.7. Just do some minor calculator work there. And since this is 38.7, we can easily now find this big angle, which is the bearing of R measured from T. So we simply say 360 minus 38.7, and that would give us the bearing that we want, which is 321.3 degrees. All right. Next question is to look at another diagram that talks about a village is 20 kilometers. Village P is 20 kilometers from a village Q on a bearing of 165 degrees. So let's put in our north line first. Our north line, um, this is north, this is south, this is west, this is east, all right? So P, a village P is 20 kilometers from Q. So right at the center here is our Q. And we are going to measure 165 degrees. Now remember here is 90, here's 180. So 165 degrees would fall somewhere between these two. So 165 degrees, let me mark the angle, the bearing. This is it, 165 degrees. That's our bearing from here to here, measured from the north line to this point. This is our Q, and at this point here is our P. It's 20 kilometers away, which means that this distance is 20 kilometers. And now we are asked to do some calculations to find how far Q is west of P. To do that, we need a triangle. So we can draw a triangle in two ways. One, we can take this line further out, this, this latitude, and then we drop the north line here and create a right angle triangle. So the latitude and the longitude would create a right angle here. So we have a right angle triangle here. Or you could continue downward with this line, that north line, and draw this latitude across across it. And then you would get your, your um, right angle there. So you could draw it at the top of the line or you could draw it beneath the line. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to be using the one here at the top, up here. So if you're using it up here, this whole angle is 165. That's my reason for using this side. We know that this part here is 90 degrees, which means that this part is the difference between 90 and 165. So 165 minus 90 leaves you with 75 degrees. So this angle here is 75. 
I'll just separate that triangle a little bit. And so we can do some calculations using it. All right, so here is our right angle triangle. Here is our 75 degrees, and this is our 20 kilometers. Now, what do we want to find? How far Q is west of P? So here is our P, here is our Q. To go a west direction would mean to go in that direction. So we need to find this side of the triangle. I'm just going to call it W. Notice that W is the adjacent side, and this side is the hypotenuse. I'm going to write this 20 kilometers a little better. So 20 km. All right. So this is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. So we're going to use cosine. This is part A. So we can say the, the cosine of angle 75 is equal to the, this direction traveled west, the adjacent side divided by 20. And we can cross multiply here to say 20 cos 75 equal W. That would give us 20 cos 75. That would give us 5.2 kilometers. And that answers part A of the question. Now, for part B, how far north? To go north, we'd have to go this direction, up. So this direction would represent north. So I'm going to put this side and call it this direction north. So in answering part B, then this side becomes the hypotenuse, and this side is the, sorry, the opposite side, rather, and this side is the hypotenuse. So we're going to use sine. So the sine of 75 is equal to the opposite side, which is the distance traveled north over 20, which is our hypotenuse, cross multiply. You get 20 sine 75 is equal to the distance traveled north. And that works out to give us 19.3 kilometers. So the distance traveled north, if you, if you wanted to go back there, it would be 19.3. And the other one would be 5. 0.2 km. Finally, let's look at this question. It also appears on, on a multiple choice paper. Plane is traveling in a direction of 45 degrees. Notice the bearing. Change this course to 135. So the first thing we do is that we need to set up our north line. Um, it's Cannot overemphasize it how much you need to um, draw your north line when you're doing these things. And remember, CXE does give you marks for drawing your diagrams correctly. So north, south, drawing and labeling your diagrams correctly. West, east. Um, we are told that the plane is on a 45 degree. This is 90, this is zero. So 45 degrees right here, somewhere there. Let's just write in 45 there. Um, so your plane is traveling in this direction. All right, the plane changes course in a clockwise direction. Remember, bearings are measured clockwise. So we continue this bearing, and the plane now ends up on a bearing of 135, which is somewhere between here and here, because this one here is 180 degrees. So this big angle is 135 degrees. And the question is, what was it change that the airplane made or the person flying the airplane the angle through which the plane is turned so it's going this direction and now it's changed and it's now going in this direction so what is the angle through which it changed well we can simply do a subtraction there from this point to this point is 45 and the whole thing is 135 so we can simply say 135 minus 45 degrees and that gives us 90 degrees so the answer would have been B, the angle through which the plane turned. Um, this lesson, as mentioned before, is the basis of moving on to the other lesson, which will come up after this one, that deals with the more advanced questions in bearings that tend to pop up on section two of the paper, ge um, geometry and trigonometry. Um, I hope you find this useful. In order for you to progress to that particular lesson, you will need to be familiar with the concepts in this lesson. So maybe you want to watch it again, or if you have gotten it, then it's that you, you can safely move on to the other lesson. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you would have benefited from this lesson today. Remember to subscribe and to comment.